you guys my name is Brittany and welcome back to my youtube channel you guys in today's video i am going to be sharing my homeschooling math journey so if any of you guys are new here to my channel again i'm Brittany. i'm a homeschooling mom to three girls i'm in my fourth year of homeschool and if any of you guys are old and returning subscribers you already know I have been through a homeschooling math saga in my homeschool. I really feel like I've tried almost all the math curriculums out there. I mean, I really haven't, but I personally feel like I have. <laughs> so in today's video, you guys, I'm just going to share with you all of the math curricula that I have tried out in particular with my oldest daughter, our homeschooling math journey, and how we ended up where we are with the math curricula that we are using in our homeschool. Um, I will highlight my top three favorite um, homeschooling math uh, programs that I have enjoyed that I will potentially go back to with my younger kiddos um, if I do find that the curricula we are using isn't working for them. So we're going to go ahead and get into this video. I do have some notes that I'm going to be uh, referring to so I can make sure this video is really short and concise for you guys. And I also went and I found a lot of like math samples from my daughter's uh, years using math curriculas. And I put it in a binder so I can share with them with you guys. Um, I'm going to look through some of my footage on my hard drive. And if I have any flip throughs of any of these particular curriculums to show you, I'm going to try to show as much as I can because I definitely know math is a hard subject, not only for me, but for a lot of you guys. And I really hope this video can help you, you know, kind of pick and choose between some math curriculums that's going to actually work out for you in your homeschool. If I can prevent anyone from going through this math saga that I have went through, hopefully this video will help at least one of you guys. I definitely will be happy. So you guys, we're going to go ahead and get started. So I started homeschooling my oldest daughter when she was in the third grade. And you guys, I'm going to be completely honest. I didn't do any research when it came to homeschooling math curriculums. I literally typed in Amazon homeschooling math curriculums and a few popped up. The first few that popped up was Abeka Arithmetic and Horizons were like one of the uh, top ones that popped up. I did a few Google searches. They looked like they both were good curriculas. And at the end of the day, I chose the one that was going to get shipped to my house the fastest because we were in like COVID season and it was a Becca arithmetic that was going to get to my house maybe a couple of days faster. So I ended up going with that. Uh, personally, I was just looking for a traditional uh, math curricula that I can just get through with my daughter at the time. Um, I didn't want to make, or me and my husband wasn't making really any long-term homeschooling commitments. We just knew we were going to homeschool at least for her third grade year. So we just wanted something to just hold us, get us through. And that was kind of like what we did. So Abeka Arithmetic, you guys. Abeka Arithmetic is not commonly chord aligned. It is pretty much a basic traditional traditional uh, spiral math program. One thing I did enjoy about Abeka Arithmetic 3 was that this workbook is really, really colorful and it's really tastefully done. It's not too bam in your face. Um, my daughter really appreciated like the spiral review. At the beginning of each lesson, they have like this little section right here where you will go through like the teaching portion with the student and then you had like some class practice you can do and then on the back of a Becca arithmetic was like the independent practice for the most part you guys uh some days i was able to just give brielle her a Becca arithmetic read her lesson real quick and she was able to do her math independently all by herself and in that season that I was in I definitely needed it when I started homeschooling um, my youngest daughter was only six months old I still was like exclusively nursing her and then uh, my middle daughter was only two so I just had to find like simple curriculas just for me to be able to like get it in get it out get her math done and Abeka definitely did it for us in our homeschool. It was very thorough. I really enjoyed the tests, the speed drills, and the mental math component that comes along with Abeka. Now, I didn't buy the teacher's guide uh, when I was using Abeka Arithmetic 3. I just um, read the instructions at the top. If um, my daughter needed any further instruction, I uh, found some videos on YouTube. I used a lot of math antic videos. If it was a concept that she didn't understand the explaining that I did, I popped that video in and then she did her lesson practice. So I really DIY'd our math curricula for our first year. And you guys, I think Abeka is just a solid curriculum because 
it worked for her. Now towards the second half of the curriculum, I definitely will say was when I started to notice the rigor that Abeka has. Um, it started to get really, really intense. My daughter started to get stressed out about math. Um, it was no longer just that simple do your worksheet. It really began like, I really began to see the tears with math and that's definitely no fun in your homeschool when it hits that point. And I definitely realized that math or that Abeka arithmetic definitely flows at more of an accelerated rate, which I mean, for some kids that excel in math, they would do perfectly fine. But I noticed my daughter still needed that, you know, repetition, that review. And um, I was thinking towards the end of the year, maybe I need to switch to something else. If we continue with our homeschooling math journey or our homeschooling journey in general, um, and I was really, really like debating that. But one thing I will say is at the end of our homeschooling year, when we did do our standardized testing, um, Brielle's math scores, I mean, I was just like so surprised at her math scores at the end of her standardized test. So I knew Rebecca arithmetic was a strong math, but I was just, I was just concerned about like the tears, the frustration that came along with it because of its accelerated pace. One thing I definitely will say is that Abeka arithmetic, it does kind of lack a lot of geometry. I noticed, especially when I started to dabble into other curriculums, um, at least in this Abeka arithmetic uh, three and four level that I do have some experience with, it didn't have as much geometry as other curriculars did. Um, so that was one thing I noticed right off the back. Um, so that was one thing about it. And I feel like at the end of the day, like I said before, the only reason why Abeka didn't work was because it just moved too fast. If Abeka moved a little bit slower, I definitely probably wouldn't have switched. We probably would have used Abeka for her elementary years. Um, so that is my only con. So as far as Abeka Arithmetic 3, we've completed that book cover to cover. I believe it's a total of 170 lessons in Abeka. So um, we completed it. And, you know, I was just like, all right, we got to move forward to our next year. I need to do some research and finding a new math curricula that was going to work for Brielle in our homeschool. So you guys, the second math curricula that I tried out in our homeschool was Singapore Dimensions. And I went ahead and I got her level 4A for the fourth grade. Now you guys, Singapore. Singapore is commonly core aligned and it's more of a mastery. It, I would say mastery slash spiral because each chapter you're only going over one concept. So you might be going over place value for one chapter or multiplying fractions for one chapter, dividing fractions. They have a geometry chapter. Um, so every chapter you're going over something specific, but in the workbook pages, they do have like some type of spiral review where they do uh, pull in other concepts that they went over in the previous chapter. So I would say mastery slash spiral would be a good term for uh, Singapore dimensions. Um, I love that Singapore focused on mental math and problem solving. Um, that was really, really cool. I love the incorporation of the manipulatives in Singapore because with Abeka, there was no manipulatives unless I came up with some things on my own. There was a money unit in Abeka and I went and got um, a couple of games for me and my um, oldest daughter to play. But other than that, it was no type of like actual manipulatives. And I feel like sometimes when the kids have manipulatives, they're really able to see and, and learn how those math parts are being moved around. And it's really, really beneficial, especially for, you know, the younger years, even the older years. Um, so that was one thing I really loved about Singapore Dimensions Math. Um, it focuses on conceptual math. Um, I liked it as a video option for Singapore Dimensions now that they have. I'm not too sure how far the video options go, but at the time they did have the videos for uh, Singapore Dimensions 4A and 4B for like an additional like subscription charge. Of course, Abeka has their videos with Abeka Academy too as well. Um, I believe the Abeka videos are way more expensive than the Singapore Dimensions subscription for the year was. Um, one thing I loved about it, the lessons were really, really colorful, engaging. Um, I love the fact how they always will have like some type of abstract thinking at the beginning of the lesson where it's like a big picture thinking and then uh, they will break down the problem. So I guess it goes into like that abstract pictorial and then you're using your hands and then you're actually uh, writing it down in the workbook. So that was like their method that Singapore did, which I really, really appreciated. Um, I feel like Singapore Dimensions, even though this is a math 
math curriculum, I used the less amount of time. It was my favorite to teach. Um, maybe because my brain just thinks that way. Um, I really feel like uh, my cons about Singapore Dimension and the only reason why I stopped it, and this is like my number one biggest regret when it came to math, I stopped it because it was too teacher intensive. I was trying to figure out where to schedule it in. Sometimes we were doing it early in the morning before my husband went off to work. Me and my daughter was waking up early, but then we were tired of waking up so early before he went off to work. Then we were doing it in the afternoons when I was putting my younger two for nap time. But during the afternoons, my daughter was just like done throughout the day, uh, especially after all her other subjects she did. Um, so it was just so hard for us to really figure out the right timing for us to do Singapore Dimensions. And I felt like math was being put on the back burner, which is a subject I definitely didn't want to neglect in our homeschool. And that's ultimately which led me to switch uh, back to something that was more familiar in our homeschool. But I do regret that switch, you guys. And I'm going to be completely honest because uh, Singapore Dimensions is a math curriculum that I definitely would recommend for any of you guys to check out to see if it might be something that works for you, especially if you're starting off your kids from the beginning. I really appreciated it. Um, the only thing about Singapore in comparison to some of the other curriculums that I am sharing with you guys, it is pretty pricey when it comes to like the price tag. But if you want to buy things used, like maybe find your teacher's guides on eBay or Facebook Marketplace used and just only buy the workbooks, you definitely can make it more affordable. But just brand new off the back, it is one of the more expensive curriculums um, that I am mentioning today. So uh, that's Singapore Dimensions, you guys. And hopefully I can find some footage of Singapore to share with you guys. If not, Singapore's website, they do have a lot of examples on their website, which is really, really um, awesome. You're able to see a lot of their sample pages. So that is Singapore Dimensions. That is one of my like homeschool regrets is dropping that curricula because uh, the time that we did spend in the curriculum, Brielle, she did learn math. Um, she did get frustrated sometimes, but she was retaining the information. And I really seen growth in her from the short time that we did use it. And I believe we only used it for about two chapters, which is about maybe a month of Singapore. So that was it. So in her fourth grade year, we only used it for the month of August. Now, when Singapore Dimensions didn't work for us, or I guess work for like the timing and everything like that, as far as work for us, I just went back to Old Faithful. I went back to Abeka Arithmetic for you guys. And as I mentioned earlier, um, it's nothing wrong with Abeka. The only thing that was wrong with Abeka for my this particular child was that uh, just the speed at which Abeka went it didn't teach like the conceptual and the why behind math. It's like straight to the point problems. You get in them, you hone in them in. And I really love that for like the reinforcement of math, but it just didn't work for her. So I was back at the drawing board when it came to um, homeschooling math curriculums. And you guys, um, at the time, the new Simply Good and Beautiful uh, math 4 just came out and I was like, you know what? Let's go ahead and try out the Simply Good and Beautiful Math 4. Um, let's see if this one may work. I knew Simply Good and Beautiful Math wasn't going to be a math that I was going to stick with in the long haul. I was just looking for a math to get us through the fourth grade. Because at the time, I think uh, the Good and Beautiful, Simply Beautiful Math only went to level five. And I seen it was only going to go to about uh, grade eight. And I wanted to pick a math curriculum at that point that was going to go all the way, you know, to the end with her. I was just like, I just want to find something we can just stick with. So hopefully this will just work just for this year. Let's just test it out and see how it goes. Um, the Simply Good and Beautiful Math, again, it's not commonly core um, or it's like spiral. It does have like the student led and independent practice. It has video lessons that's included with the Simply Good and Beautiful Math. Um, one thing I would definitely say is the Simply Good and Beautiful Math doesn't have any emphasis on conceptual math. It's similar to a Becca where it's just that, you know, spiral uh, concept where they give you a new concept each day. Do uh, you have it in your review and practice next day, a new concept, and it slowly uh, builds upon each other incrementally. 
Um, again, the video options are optional. So if your kid doesn't want to watch the videos, they can read like the little mini lesson in the beginning of the uh, Simply Good and Beautiful. I will say the videos, they were pretty engaging. Um, they definitely try to incorporate like that you know, real life into math. Um, and of course, the Simply Good and Beautiful Math, you guys, it's, you know, beautiful, it's very colorful, um, it's game-based, and it focuses on making math fun. At least that's what I noticed about the Simply Good and Beautiful Math. Um, in the fourth grade, in my personal opinion, from coming from a Becca in Singapore, I felt like it was a little bit behind in comparison to those two curriculas. Uh, it still was focusing on multiplication and the master of multiplication in fourth grade, whereas Abeka and Singapore, they move past math fact fluency. So that was one thing I noticed right away. Um, it was strong in geometry. Um, it did have like a lot of geometry games, which I didn't really see in Abeka. Uh, so that was one thing I did notice off the back was that the Good and Beautiful did have like more geometry, more uh, games incorporated within it as far as that. Um, I did find that the Good and the Beautiful was very bouncy. It didn't really have a rhyme or a reason to how the lessons flowed, in my opinion. Um, I felt like Abeka and Singapore, from using those two curriculums, then going to Simply Good and Beautiful Math, I seen how they were more incremental in the way they taught the concepts, whereas the Good and the Beautiful was just bouncy and it was just bringing maybe fractions, the multiplication, division. It didn't have that like incremental build that made sense. Um, so I felt like it was more scattered. And um, that was uh, ultimately what led me to stop using the Becca because I wasn't seeing any growth with my oldest daughter. It was just bouncy. And it felt like, in my personal opinion, at this level, it felt like I was just giving her summer review worksheets. She wasn't necessarily learning or uh, retaining the concept. She was just getting more review and she might have grasped a concept or not. So... I did a uh, Simply Good and Beautiful Math from, I think, what was it? From September until December, we completed half of the Good and the Beautiful. So we did a good 60 out of the 120 lessons. So I got a good footing in that curricula to really see what it was about. And ultimately, it wasn't a good fit for me and what I was looking for in math. So um, I was just like, oh, it's December. Like, can I, you know, continue with this math curriculum until, uh, what was that, May? Like, can I just make this one work? Um, and I was thinking, well, maybe if I go ahead and start adding in some of the Abeka worksheets and maybe Abeka Arithmetic 4 would be like her main curriculum. And then we'll just kind of like mix and match Abeka and the Good and the Beautiful. We did that for a little while before I just made the ultimate decision. Like when we went on our Christmas break, I was like, I can't do this anymore. I'm like piecing this together. I feel like she's not grasping a solid foundation in math. We're just all over the place. And I really felt like I need to make a solid math decision for my oldest daughter. So while we're on Christmas break, instead of me enjoying my Christmas break, you guys, I was doing research on math curricula. It's like what math curriculum goes all the way to the 12th grade. I was looking at all the pros and the cons between all the math that we already tried. Which one is similar? Which one do I think will work out for Brielle? So then you guys, we landed on good old tried and true Saxon math. So here is the samples that I have of Saxon. This is Saxon 6.5. I did the placement test for her. And because she was coming from Abeka, she had a little bit of Singapore. Uh, she had a little bit of the good and the beautiful. She kind of placed in between Saxon levels. She placed, um, she was like one question wrong away from going into Saxon 7.6. So I decided to go ahead and put her in Saxon 6-5. Again, she was still in her fourth grade year. Saxon 6-5 is for us, uh, for uh, people who are like struggling in math, like a sixth grader that may be struggling in the math and a regular fifth grader. So I was like, you know what, let's just go ahead and do Saxon 6-5. This can kind of go into her um, fifth grade year and we'll just go from there. We can just take our time technically because she placed in this level. We're like a level ahead. We got a little bit of leverage when it comes to Saxon. So I was like, okay, let's just give this a try. Uh, along with Saxon, I did want that video component added into Saxon because I did appreciate that about the good and the beautiful, like the video component that they had. 
So I went ahead and I tried out Nicole the Math Lady. And you guys, I'm not gonna lie, Nicole the Math Lady, she came in and saved the day. I love how she took those Saxon lessons. She made them fun. She made them engaging. She has like her math corny break. Um, Brielle really enjoys sitting down watching those uh, math videos from Nicole the Math Lady. And uh, Saxon, you guys, Saxon 6-5. We completed Saxon 6-5 for one, uh, we completed it for, I guess I can say a whole year because we started in January. We did a little bit of Saxon throughout the summer and then she ended up completing Saxon in her fifth grade year, the September of her fifth grade year. So Saxon math, you guys. Saxon, again, is not commonly core. It's spiral. It's a traditional math, um, mathematics program. It's independent and student-led, which is something I definitely still needed in my household, again, because I still have two younger kiddos that, you know, I'm trying to make sure they're not in everything while I'm doing school with Bree. So I definitely needed something more of that student-led where I can come in on the back end. Again, uh, we use Nicole the Math Lady, but that's not the only video options with Saxon Math. They have like the Dive DVDs. They have so many other video platforms that you can use with Saxon, which is amazing. Um, I loved, again, that Saxon replicated uh, the things that I really enjoyed about Abeka, where it has like that daily like uh, speed drills that they do every morning. They have the mental math component, which again, I enjoyed as well. Um, I really like those like math fact fluency she said they do with the kids because at this fate at this age you want those facts to be fluent because as they get into like long division long multiplication they just really have to be able to spew out those facts in order from them to be able to do those higher mathematic concepts and i love that about saxon and abeka how it had that like review and repetition as far as like those math facts which was great um Again, uh, Saxon is not colorful. It's just black and white. Uh, but my daughter was okay with that. Um, one thing I will say again about Saxon math is that Saxon is a thorough math uh, program. However, like Singapore Dimensions, Saxon does not teach conceptual math. So Singapore Dimensions, out of all the maths that I told you, is the only math that teaches conceptual math where the kids are learning like the why behind the math. Saxon really teaches the kids math through repetition. So they get their lesson practice where they learn a new concept and in their mixed practice review uh, each day, they're reviewing older concepts taught from previous lessons. So they always have that continuously spiral review. Um, each day they are learning a new math concept. However, it's very incremental. So it's not how uh, the good and the beautiful had it where it didn't make sense. It was more incremental like a Becca where it kind of made sense where they were going. But my only problem that I was having with Saxon with my oldest daughter was after we completed Saxon 6-5, towards like the ending part of Saxon 6-5, I was noticing that we had to stop and pause lessons because how the incremental, how they taught the kids through like those that incremental approach where they would probably teach them part A of how to, you know, let's just say they were teaching them how to multiply uh, decimals. They will only teach them part A. Six or seven lessons, they would teach them part B. So my daughter, even though we had our mixed practice, you know, that was there, my daughter would sometimes forget the part A and then they were trying to teach her the part B. So we had to stop and pause and go back to the part A so she can understand it. And it was just like stalling her lessons. Now, one thing about Saxon is Saxon has a lot of mixed practice reviews and a lot of people and users who use Saxon, uh, a lot of us do either, either the evens or the odds. My only concern about only doing the evens or odds with Saxon is the program is designed for you to do all the problems. And I see why it's designed for you to do all the problems because if you just do evens or odds, you may be missing um, a problem each day that the kids haven't had a chance to review and then they're forgetting the concepts. And at least that's what was happening with my oldest daughter. Um, when we got into Saxon 7-6, Saxon 7-6, again, same format, same flow. It just was taking her so long to do math i was finding just with her doing her speed drill mental math mixed practice evens or odds and her lesson practice she was doing math some days you guys 
for two hours just because at that phase and it's so crazy for me to say that right now but at that level the problems the long division the multi-division uh, multi-multiplication everything had more than one step so one problem wasn't taken two or three seconds um, the word problems, while they were very excellent and thorough, and sometimes I do miss the word problems, there were more than one step. And uh, you really have to focus on getting those word problems right. While my daughter's retention was still there in the math, she was just getting lost with the way that the lessons was incrementally uh, building. It was taking her long and the frustration with math it was just there and I knew I had to do something about it. Um, so we were in December, this is December of 2021 when this was going on. So I was just like, you know what, I have to, or 2022, excuse me, December of 2022 was, this was going on. So I was like, I have to figure something out. But I was just like, this this is happening again. Like, why are we keep on having these mid-year math curriculum switches? We did Saxon for a whole level. And I just thought Saxon was going to be it for us in our homeschool. And I was really, really frustrated, you guys. Um, I made a video on my channel all about my switch from Saxon to the math we're using now, which again is Math You See. Um, and I was so, at that point, you guys, I was so frustrated. I was just like... I don't want to make another math curriculum switch, but you know, if I don't make a math curriculum switch, like where are we going to head in our homeschool? It's just frustration. It's tears. You know, we're back at point A. So I knew I had to make the switch. I knew it was time for me to find something for Brielle. And it was just like, ugh, not again. But you guys, uh, we as homeschooling parents, we just, we will fight for our kids and we will do the best for them. And even though Saxon was working in some ways and, you know, no curriculum is perfect. And sometimes you just have to grit your teeth and just stick and commit to something. Saxon was something I knew I couldn't grit my teeth and commit to with this particular child. I had to make a switch with her. Um, so I was trying out Math UC Primer with Leia, with my four-year-old at the time. We just was doing maybe a few sheets. We were doing like maybe one or two worksheets a week, just kind of like getting her feet wet because at the time she was just getting introduced to new math concepts. She was only four. I just wanted her to get like a feel of school and things like that. So we started Math UC Primer and she loved it. And when Brielle seen the blocks and the engagement with Math UC, she was like, you know, mom, do they have a math? in that level for me, like, can, can we just try something? So I was like, you know what? Yes, Brie, they do. I knew at the end of that year, after we finished Saxon 7-6, I wasn't gonna continue with Saxon. I did a lot of research with Matthew C and I knew I was gonna try it with her. So I went ahead and I made the switch to Matthew C for her. She placed at that time in between Matthew C Epsilon and Matthew C Zeta. So um, I was just like, you know what? I'm, I'd rather take her back in math, even though I know she knew most of the fractions because math, you see, is mastery. So each one of the math, you see, books only goes over one concept. So yeah, you guys, in the beginning of math, you see, they are just doing um, addition, subtraction, uh, what is it, multiplication, division, and then in the next levels uh, that we were in, because I knew she already mastered those concepts, I knew um, she was either going to be in Epsilon, which was just going over the fractions, or we were going to be going into Zeta, which was the decimals and percentages. So I decided to go ahead and put her in Epsilon, even though I knew she mastered some parts of fractions, she didn't master them all. I was like, let me just go ahead and take her back in our homeschooling journey. So we went into Matthew C, uh, January of 2023. And you guys, now it is January 2024. And Brielle has finished two levels of math you see in one year, which is amazing. Now, you guys, we just started math, you see, pre-algebra. And I cannot believe like we are at this point in math, you see. Math UC is mastery, is a mastery based program. It's conceptual math. With the Epsilon, they have like these fraction overlays and those fraction overlays really helped her hone in the uh, mathematic concepts when it came to uh, the fractions. Uh, at the beginning, I was kind of nervous she was going to become dependent on the overlays, but she didn't. Uh, it, she kind of phased out of it and she was able to see that mentally she got the fractions. We completed uh, Epsilon at the end of her fifth grade year, which was amazing. I was happy, like, okay, at least we finished 
one math at the end of her, um, you know, um, year, school year, at least I can say we completed something. So I was happy we completed that level. So I was like, okay, cool. So, well, actually we did complete two maths because she completed Saxon 6.5 and Epsilon. So yeah, so she completed two maths technically at the end of her fifth grade year. So I was really happy about that. So you guys, we uh, started Math UC Zeta in June. And um, I don't really know if I can count like the lesson she did during the summer because she was only doing it like three to four days out the week. We wasn't as consistent with Matthew C. Zeta during the summer, but once we hit in our school year at the end of July was when we became consistent. So I guess I will still say June. She worked in it from June until December and she completed this level. Um, I think Matthew C. just works out for Brielle because Matthew C., they go over one concept at a time. That's it. She masters it for the whole week. Towards the end of the week when they have those systematic review and practices, they have um, um, like three of them. So it's D, E, and F. So they are like the systematic reviews and practices that will bring back in the older concepts that she's learned. Now, one thing that's cool about math, you see that I don't hear too often is that when we were doing Epsilon, Epsilon still had a lot of the uh, multiplication and division from Gamma and Delta in it in the systematic review. So even though the focus is fractions, she still had multiplication and division in here. And in Zeta, even though this level is just focusing on decimals and percentages, they still had fractions from Epsilon in here. So it does still have somewhat of a review. So if you guys are worried that your kids are going to forget the concepts, I do like how they already have that built in the systematic review within the book. So they're not going to forget the concepts that they learned in a previous level, which is amazing. I think that's probably why Matthew C worked out for us. I just really love just the clean pages. It's simple, it's thorough, it's to the point, and we're able to go at her own pace. So if it's a lesson she learned, she's able to just kind of like uh, speed through that week. And if it's a lesson that's taken her longer, we can take our time. We can even go on to the Matthew C's website and generate more worksheets if we need to take our time on that particular lesson. So I really find, especially for kids like my daughter, whose math is not her strongest subject, but when she has it, she's confident. I definitely will say math, you see, is great for that type of learner. If you have an accelerated learner who's great in math, I don't know if I would recommend math, you see. Um, it would be good because they're able to go at their own pace, but I would definitely say uh, trying things like Singapore Dimension would probably be better for a kid that's more accelerated uh, in math uh, that can think outside the box, outside the box, especially with the uh, concepts that in the way that Singapore Dimensions teaches it. But if you have a kiddo like my daughter, Matthew C just works out great for her. So. I'm excited now that we are in math, you see pre-algebra and just to kind of see how she goes with math, it's working for her. We're going to stick with this, even though I have been tempted to change her math curriculum now that she's getting up there. I think I'm making a decision to, we're sticking with this and, and you know, if it's not broke, I'm not trying to fix nothing. So we are sticking with math, you see. Um, I love that now at this level, they do have the, um, here, I'm going to grab it right here. They have the, um algebra decimals and um, inserts that she uses over top of like the older um, math you see blocks so she's still able to use manipulatives even in this higher level of math is which I really really appreciate um, she's going over negative numbers right now and I love how she was able to do and use the blocks when she was doing that uh, concept which was really really amazing so math you see has been a hit in our homeschool. As far as my younger kiddos coming up, I have a kindergartner and a pre k -er. Um, You guys, like, I love Matthew C, but I love math with confidence for them in particular with Matthew C. So with my younger kiddos, we're doing math with confidence, and I think I'm always going to pair math with confidence with math you see until you know i find they like one better than the other for my younger ones but for the most part math with confidence math you see are the two math curriculums that i'm sticking with in my homeschool um i really really enjoy these curriculas my top three curriculas that i share with you guys in today's video definitely is singapore dimensions saxon and math you see if you are looking for a curriculum try out one of those three i feel like out of all those uh, curriculums they are the strongest and I feel like they are the most well-rounded curriculums in all the concepts being taught. That's just my personal opinion from my personal experience. 
So you guys, I really hope this video wasn't too long and I really hope you guys enjoy coming along as I share my homeschooling math journey. Um, it definitely was a long one, but I'm so happy with where we are at in our homeschool with math. Things is flowing, things is sticking. We are consistent <laughs> and we're getting through levels. And um, I really hope that you guys all, like I said again, enjoyed this video. And as always, I look forward to seeing everybody in my next one. Bye.